And if you have your Bibles, we're going to look at some verses today. Everybody come to get a word from God? Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I'll say it one more time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Everybody there? Amen. And since we have the same spirit of faith, how I many know oh God gave every man a measure of faith? If you didn't know that, God gave every man a measure of faith. That measure is like a five-gallon bucket of mustard seeds. And the Bible says if you have a mustard seed faith, one grain, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and cast into the sea it will. And so you already have a five-gallon bucket full of mustard seeds that God's given every person. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. Come on. He gives to every man equally and liberally. The question is, faith is how much have you exercised it? That's a good old heavenly word, exercised it. <laughs> Come on. How much lifting have you done? Faith grows when you exercise it. Come on. You're, you have just as much as everybody else. If somebody else looks like their faith is moving more than you, then they've probably already been through some trials and tribulations, and they've been through some stuff, and they've exercised their faith. But even people that have exercised their faith before sometimes find themselves in situations where they start stop saying so. But the key that I'm going to bring out this morning in all of this is one of the, we're going to go to that verse in a minute. We're going to look at it over in Psalms 107 in depth there in a minute. But it says, let the redeemed. It didn't say let any joker say so. It didn't say let Joe Blow say so. It said let the redeemed of the Lord. Listen, I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am redeemed from those things that the enemy would throw at me when I stay under the blood. The Bible says I have to stay in Christ which tells me I can get out of Christ. Okay. Come on. But you know if you're in or out, right? If you ain't in, today's just as good a day as any to get in. Amen. Or get back in. Amen. Come on. Because when you're the redeemed of the Lord, you start talking different. You start thinking different. But some days you've got to remind yourself. I believe before Goliath ever stepped out to face his giant, he said the same, because he spoke to the giant. said, in the name of the Lord. He didn't come in his name. He said, the same God that was with me with the lion, the same God that was with me with the bear is with me now. He was saying so. He was reminding himself of the God that had been with him. Come on. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. He reminded himself of God. He reminded himself of what God had already done for him. And if you don't start reminding yourself of the Word of God and what God has already done, you're going to be whipped before you ever start. And some days you'll just be tired and you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to put in your faith building blocks. And some of that starts simply with the redeemed of the Lord saying so. So here it says that we have the same spirit of faith in keeping with that one is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. I believed, therefore I spoke. Faith speaks. Come on. Same spirit of faith. Come on, it's right there in the Word. We also believe, therefore speak. Faith speaks. Faith is an action word. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are you saying? What are you speaking? You know, a lot of people, when they speak to me, they know all the right words to say, and then they spend the rest of their week saying dumb stuff. <laughs> and then they come back and go, I don't know what's going on, Pastor. It just didn't work. I go, what are you saying? <laughs> well, <laughs> they don't say... I'm supposed to say this, but I've been saying that. They'll say, well, I don't know. It's just been hard. And right then, I know what they've been saying. <laughs> Come on. Not always. Sometimes it is hard, you know. 
Sometimes, so listen, I'm not knocking you. I'm here to encourage you that everybody comes to a point, I don't care who you are, that you have to remind yourself that you're the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. And what are you saying? Listen, there's been some seasons here recently that I know all of these things, but some of the stuff I'm just tired of going through. I would love to be up running around this morning. It's my heart's desire. And I believe God loves me and I believe I'm going to be. But, you know, there's some seasons I'm tired of going through. Now, if I say that very many times out loud, I've now entered into dumb status. I've now become a fool. Because the redeemed of the Lord says that by his stripes I was healed. I command this body to come aligned with the word of God. I am the healed of the Lord. Inheriting, come on, healing is a children's bread. It is my inheritance. Come on, that is what I need to speak to frame my world by faith. And when I frame that world, see, all of a sudden I start thinking, I think I can. I believe I can. Come on, I know I can. We're going to look at another verse this morning. We're going to look at the faith chapter. Does anybody know where the faith chapter is at? Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. Glory. Uh -huh. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Well, let's just start in verse 1. You can't not read that. I mean... Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you've been around here very long, you've seen my illustration of reaching over into the unseen realm and pulling into the seen realm. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it ain't real. Come on. Come on. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it can't. That's what faith does. You believe it before you see it. If you've got to see it before you believe it, it's not faith. Come on. It says, for it by the elders obtained a good report. How many want a good report? Mm -hmm. So we see by faith we have to do what? Speak it, right? right. Come on. Right. You just read it. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Woo. So how did God frame, what did God do? Did he speak the world or just think about it? <laughs> he spoke the word by faith. How many know when he spoke it, he expected something to happen? Some of you say, well, that's God with the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in me and you. And it quickens your mortal body. And he told us to speak it, right? Amen. And we have that same faith. So, you know what I have to do sometimes when the redeemed of the Lord, this redeemed of the Lord says so? I have to look and see what I've been framing of my world. If I don't like something I've built, I have the option to tear it down. And I can start speaking faith. By his stripes I was healed. Do you know how long I've watched people beg to get something God's already done? Someone said, well, you've been resisting stuff. Yeah, I get one thing and then I get another. I'm evangelizing the whole medical field in Springfield, I think, one doctor at a time. Amen. I'm getting a pretty good report with them. I think we about got the dentist wore down. or are up on it. <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking, don't you? No, no, no I believe it. But... Listen, think, I know a lot of you have come where I came from, the construction, but could you start thinking about your world being framed by the words you speak? What kind of world are you doing? There, there, you know, when I was a single guy, the devil would try to convince you that no one was ever going to come along, it would never happen, and he would get you to curse everything that ever happened and do dumb stuff and just take yourself into a mess. Whenever I finally just sold out to God, it freed him up, and I started speaking faith in it. Matter of fact, I gave up, but if it was going to be God, it was going to be a certain way, and I framed what had to happen. And matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, I made it a very narrow doorway that poor Pastor Tammy barely fit through, but she made it in. And that's how I knew it was God. 
Come on, uh, uh, listen, are you listening this morning? Well, listen, I, I can tell you the times that I was resisting some things. About, there was another season when I couldn't walk, to be honest. It went on, except that time it only went on for a year. Except for that year, it felt like forever. This is a little longer. I was in a service. I wasn't even preaching. I was with a friend from South Africa. His name was Henny Honka. <laughs> True story. And he was just preaching. And I reached out by faith, grabbed a hold of the Word, framed it, stood up, and started walking. Amen. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The devil's trying to convince me that that just ain't going to happen for me this time around. I mean, I pray for everybody every Sunday and they get healed, right? But I guess it's just not meant to be for me. I'm just going to be this way forever. Now, how I many know I'm not going to receive that? But does that keep that guy from whispering that to me? No, he doesn't. But I have a choice what I let in, right? right. But I have to start filling my mind with the Word of God and I have to frame my world. Is there days that I get tired? Yeah. Yes. Now, why am I talking about me? Because I don't. you don't want me to talk about you. You don't want me to talk about the depression. You don't want me to talk about the money. You don't want me to talk about uh, the addictions. You don't want me to talk about your things that are overcoming you. You don't want me to talk about you, so I'll talk about me. And you apply it where it needs to be, like the Holy Ghost is already trying to do. Right. Come on. You frame your... If you have to confess to be saved, what you say matters. And saying nothing is saying something. I'm going to say it again. Saying nothing is saying something. Amen. It's saying I don't believe. It's saying I don't trust. It's saying that it's not going to happen. It's saying I'm going to just sit and stew on what the enemy is saying. Faith speaks. Come on, I'm going to say it again this morning. I'm about to get up. Faith speaks. If you're gonna, if you're gonna believe it, you're gonna speak it. Right. If you don't believe it, you don't speak it. Right. Faith speaks. Amen. Some of you need to start speaking this morning. You need to start reminding yourself you're the redeemed of the Lord. You need to remind yourself what you came from. We're gonna look at that verse. You're gonna remind yourself what God has already done for you. Listen, how many here were bound for hell when Jesus saved you? Amen. How many here, if you got what you deserve, you'd be a crispy critter today? <laughs> Come on. Listen. I didn't think I'd make it past 21 and I lived my life so. But I'm still here today. The doctors have told me over and over again I wasn't going to make it. I've never seen my kids graduate. I mean, I'm, gonna, I just thought, I'm not just going to see my kids graduate. I'm still going to be riding my motorcycle. The, the devil told me I would be in that wheelchair forever. Before I was ever in the wheelchair, he told me he's going to put me in one. I stood in faith that I wasn't going in it. When I got in one, guess what? My faith got challenged. But I didn't stay in it. And now here, here I'm still resisting. Sometimes he's like, well, you know, it'd just be easier if you'd be back in that chair. I ain't going back in that chair. Shut up, stupid. I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm going to say so. Come on, are you hearing me? What is your thing that has overcome you? What is your monkey on your back this morning that you need to start speaking in faith and let the redeemed of the Lord say so? What dream or vision has the enemy convinced you is not real that you need to stand up in faith this morning and start framing your world again and start being the redeemed of God and saying so? Faith speaks. If you're going to be a watchman for God, you've got to first start speaking in your life before you can start speaking into the world around you. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. You're going to have to start framing your world. You know how many times I found stuff in my life that I didn't like that I had to tear out when I was framing it? Stuff that I realized, oh, you can't build on that. That ain't right. You're going to have to go in there and fix some stuff. Is that fun? No. no. You know, your reputation is what you've convinced other people you are. Your character who you really is who you really are. Right. And your character is what matters. Because guess what? When you work on your character, you just get to be the same person 24-7. You don't have to work it up. You just get to be you. 
Even when you're grumpy. Sometimes I'm when I'm resisting and pain and stuff, I hate to admit this to this day, but sometimes I still get a little grumpy. But guess what? If you're around me, you'll watch me check myself too. Come on, I'm being real with you today. And I'll walk in love. And then I'll speak to my body. Because I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Listen, he by his stripes I was healed. He never has to take another beating for me. For me, he went down to hell and with Satan and made a show of him openly. He's victorious over every power of darkness. I have all authority through Christ Jesus who lives in me. I have faith to exercise it upon this world, but I can't exercise it out there and take dominion when I'm getting whipped in my own life. If you're going to be a watchman, we got to start exercising in our own lives. And the redeemed of the Lord has to say so. Listen, some of the old saints, they didn't have it all figured out, but they knew what to say and how to say it. Amen. Some of us need to start saying so. It's more than a Sunday morning Christianity. Amen. And I know I'm preaching to the choir on some of it, but I hope some of you get your dukes back up this morning. I hope some of you leave here encouraged and go, I'm the redeemed of the Lord and I'm going to say so. Amen. I'm going to frame my world with faith. I'm more than an overcomer through Christ. Listen, you, you're not trying to become an overcomer. You already are one. You just got to see who you are in Christ. And when you start speaking that, you start being that. And this ain't manifestations and positive thinking. This is the word of God by faith, realizing that you have a new DNA. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're a new creature in Christ. Quit trying to act like the old one. The devil wants you to wants you to associate with that guy so you'll frame up a bunch of dumb stuff in your house. You need to start framing up the good stuff and realizing who you are. If you don't know, dig and learn. Amen. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Amen. So Hebrews 11, 3, Through faith we understand that the words are framed by the word of God, so that things which were are seen were not which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Here's one that nobody wants to talk about. Jump down to verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Do you know how many people are worried about God pleasing them instead of them pleasing God? Do you know how many people today are worried about God pleasing them instead of them pleasing God? And you will never correctly frame your world until you realize that your purpose upon this earth is to please God and believe the things that He said and frame your world. He's not here. When you look, when you read the rest of this chapter, these people of faith, some of them died, some of them were tortured, but they held the faith. It's not always here to make your life easier. It's here to make Him known. And you need to start learning to frame your world. So without faith is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I mean, oh, God is a rewarder of those. He's going to take care. He, he keeps better records than you. But if you jump on down all the way, to verse 36, let's just jump there. And others had trial of cruel mocking, scourging, gave moral bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned and not the kind the world does today. And they were sown asunder and were tempted, were slain with sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves and earth and all. These all have obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God has provided some better thing for us that without us should not be made perfect. They all got a good report, but we got the good stuff. Every prophet wanted what you got. And you got the faith and the authority to speak something and change something. 
If you don't like your world, you can speak by faith. I've never seen the. I've never seen it with the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. Come on, he said, don't think about what the birds of the air. He take how much did you take care of the birds of the air? How much more is he going to take care of you? Come on. When you start speaking that by faith, something happens. But what has also happened is in America is we've said, well, God, I want you to pay for my $2.5 million house. I need a new BMW, and I need this much allowance every week, and I need you to really make it easy for me. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but that's not faith. Amen. And I'm not trying to make myself into some grand thing, because like I said, I have to remind myself I'm the redeemed of the Lord, and there's certain seasons I have to remind myself to start saying so. But I've been your pastor living by faith for 16 years. Actually, I've been doing it for a lot longer than that, but and not one time have I went truly hungry, hungry. I've got a little hungry, but I've never went, I've never starved to death, obviously. Come on. But there was times that I had to activate my faith. There was times that I had to wait for Pastor Tammy's faith to get activated. There was times I had to wait for other people to catch up and grow up. I'm just being honest. At any time, I could have got the wrong heart and I would have been the one that lost out. Right. This morning, you got to keep the right heart. Do you know you're the redeemed of the Lord? He redeemed you from the curse of the law. Yeah. Yeah. It should cause you that right there. You shouldn't be focusing on all the other junk that America says you need. That right there could cause, could cause you to want to rejoice that you were the demon of the Lord. Now we can turn to our key text. I got 20 minutes. I've kept my pages now. So you're like, dear Lord, he wasn't even in this text. <laughs> Psalms 107. Psalms 107, starting in verse 1. Psalms 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. If you want to start saying so, you're going to have to learn how to start praising. And that means you've got to focus on what He's done for you, on His mercy. How many in here got what you deserved? Anybody? Did anybody deserve the to get to be here this morning to wake up in your nice clothes and have the home and get the breakfast you got. Is that what you deserved? Has anybody ever been a perfect person? So, when was the last time? I know we just worshiped God this morning, so hopefully it wasn't too long ago. But how many, when was the last time you gave thanks for God? Because see, if you're going to frame your world, this needs to become who you are every morning. Amen. And at lunchtime. And in the afternoon. And in the evening. Give thanks, for He is good. His mercy endureth. That means it doesn't run out. Well, you don't know what I did, preacher. I don't really need to know. Did you repent? No. Well, let's start there. 1 John 1 9 says, He's faithful just to forgive you of all your sin, wash you clean of all your unrighteousness. Come on. How many like you? How many like your unrighteousness washed? Amen. I mean, I, I'm so thankful he didn't say, I'll wash you clean all except for that one thing. I'll wash you clean except for you know that one, the, you know, those hibbillies or those flat feathers. Verse 2 before I get in trouble. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm so thankful he starts off. Let us give thanks. His mercy is. So now we're the redeemed. What do you have to do? Say something. Now, now we just think our world is framed by it, right? He's given us faith to activate it. So you need to say something. 
Do you know most people walk around thinking something, but they hardly ever say something? And if they do say something, it's on the negative connotation, not the faith connotation? Well, I'm just venting, preacher. No, you're cursing yourself and everybody else around you. Well, I just need to talk to somebody. You don't know how I feel. I really don't care how you feel because that feeling is usually opposite of faith. Amen. You're rough. Well, if you're standing on your own two legs and going to make it in these last days, maybe I need to be. Because I want you to be bold as a lion. I want you to be sure about what you're saying. I want you to have faith. Now, do I? Now, let's just get this open. Do I care how you feel? Absolutely. You would not believe the time I spent praying for you, and if my heart hurts for you. But I am not going to coddle you. I promise you. I'm going to give you faith because you got to say to your mouth. It didn't say call for Pastor Brian to speak to it. It said you speak to it. I've got to get you to start changing how you frame your world. I've got to get you to start saying something. Come on. You're the redeemed of the Lord. Some of you just need to start with that. I'm redeemed. Some of you need to try. Go ahead and try. I'm redeemed. Felt good, didn't it? See? Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We could go through all of this for, we're, for time's sake. Uh, verse 5, they're hungry and thirsty, their soul fainteth in them. And then they, verse 6, and then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distresses. We tell you, when you cry unto God, He is always there. I don't care if you feel goosebumps or you don't feel goosebumps. By faith, He is always there. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So by faith, He is always there. And that causes the redeemed to stand up a little straight. If you really believe it, that Jesus has your back and He's behind you today and He's with you wherever you go, it'll cause you to act different. Listen, years ago when that warring angel showed up, it I didn't even know He was there, but it caused everybody else in the room to act different. And it causes people in this town to still act different. Do you know what? He's still with me whether I can see him or not. Jesus is. And the redeemed of the Lord is going to say so. Verse 9. Oh, well, we can't jump past verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness, for His wonderful works to the children of men. Listen, if I'm going to be honest with you, I just really feel like God said, man, you all don't praise me enough. Y'all are not thankful. Do, do y'all remember when you first got saved how you couldn't stop being thankful? And today, the enemy works overtime to keep your mind consumed with every issue, every problem, every circumstance coming at you. And you need to start saying, I'm redeemed of the Lord. And I say, my God is good. And His mercy endures forever. Come on. This week, just start trying. And when, when, th when things start, I, I'm not telling you not going to still have issues. We read about all those faith people that had issues. But you've got faith to start framing your world. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Come on, I've never seen the righteous forsaken and the seed begging for bread. So you think you're going to be the first one some of you need to hear that again. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. So you're going to be the first one that God ever let down on that. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen people out there begging that said they love God. I guarantee their faith weren't activated. They were completely whipped and they had bought into every lie of the enemy. Right. And they needed to be redeemed. Because right. God's not a man that he can lie, right? Some of you, I'll let you think about that. But when you start believing that, you'll frame your world different. Listen, there's been times when it's been down to things and I didn't know how God was going to do it, but He's always done it. But I had to speak it. I didn't just get to sit by and wait to see what happened. You 
know, we've had countless tornadoes come through our, our house or our neighborhood out there. And every time, guess what? I had the choice to sit there and ride it out or speak to the storm. Yeah. Some of that's going to sink into some of y'all a little later. And you may not believe that stuff. That's fine. Some of you have been with me and seen it. Some of you may still yet. We seem to live in a populated area for them. Come on, do you understand what I'm saying? I had the choice. Matter of fact, in the last one, I, the kids were freaking out a little bit, and I thought, well, and honestly, I waited a little while longer just to see if their faith was going to activate. And then it started getting a little hairy, and we lost some shingles, and I thought I better speak to it. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? You're facing storms in your life every day, whether you want to or not. We're living in the last days. And you can either sit by and say nothing, or you can start saying something. But just because you sit through it doesn't mean you said something, you, you activated your faith. Just because you survive it doesn't mean you overcame it. So then it goes on, for he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. I mean, oh God will never leave you hungry. But you got to get your mind on him. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't know if I'm going to preach all of this today. Verse 13, real fast. Then cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and brake their bands in sunder. Broke their bands and sunder. Luke four eighteen says he said the cat set the captives free, he came to heal the brokenhearted, he came to proclaim deliverance. I mean, are we still doing that today? There's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no drugs, there's no poverty that Jesus can't set you free from. There's no heartache that He can't heal. Amen. Come on. Do you realize there's still a breaker, and His name is Jesus. And it's time to redeem that the Lord said so. See, He's never stopped being the breaker, but we have stopped saying that He is the breaker. We've stopped declaring it in our lives. <clears throat> this morning, uh, there was a prophetic word that came forth through tongues and, and God gave it to me. And I waited for it to see if anybody else caught on. And the Lord said, give it to them just during the service. So all it simply was is that the breaker is here. The breaker is here. The breaker is here. If you believe that this morning, what would you speak differently? If you truly believe the breaker that made the heaven and earth, the one that, that, that raised Jesus from the dead, Jesus Christ, it says He breaks the, the gates of brass and cuts the bars of iron and sunder. Come on, that's every demonic prison cell that He can put you in. He breaks them asunder. If you believe the breaker is here this morning, how are you going to talk different? What are you going to say different this morning? Come on, I'm preaching this morning. In closing, first closing, Micah chapter 2, wherever that is in here. Verse 13 says, The breakers come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them, the Lord on the head of them. Some of you need to start saying so. But the breaker has come up. The breaker has come up. There's two verses there for you. You tie in Luke 4, 18. There's three. It's established. It's the Word of God. God is the breaker. He's the one that wants to break you free this morning. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Listen, I can lay hands on you right now. I feel it flowing. The anointing can break you free. But when you leave here this morning, you're going to have the same world you've been framing every day. Right. Only you can change the way you've been framing it. Only you can change what you've been saying. Yeah. Only you can start picking up the Word of God. Right. Come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We have something the world needs, but you've got to believe it first, right? Amen. Amen. 
Listen, as a man of God, he promised that the he said he said the just shall live by faith. I'm doing my part. I'm staying that way. I'm gonna live by faith, and he's gonna take care of me. Start replenishing yourself with the word of God and start believing you are who God says you are. That you already got all the faith you need. And start saying so. I believe you'll see a shift in the coming weeks like you've never seen. Come on. I'm encouraging you. Some, and some of you have done all this before. You've just gotten tired. So I'm encouraging you to get back at it again and start framing your work. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed and highly favored. It's more than a broken chain church slogan. I'm blessed and highly favored even when I don't feel like it. Even when I don't see it. That's who I am because I'm his favorite. We all are. We're his king's kids. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. He gave His only begotten Son that none should perish and all should have everlasting life. He redeemed you from the curse of the law. He didn't remove the law, but He redeemed you from the curse of it. So you don't have to live underneath it. You can repent and turn and live in such a way that causes other people to want to come up. I curse every spirit of infirmity in this building today and I release healing in Jesus' name. That, that is part of the redeemed of the Lord. It's your inheritance. Yes. Woo! I felt somebody just being healed. There's some of you that you've been paying your tithes and you've been struggling financially. Does that mean that God's just going to miraculously throw money down from heaven? No. You know, you know what? He can make things stretch. He can, he can do all kinds of ways. But I do believe there's a release coming for some of you where the pressure is not going to be as, as tight as it's felt. But you have to say so. Lord, you said you rebuked the devourer for my sake. There's nothing wrong with making that petition. Lord, I'm paying my tithes. You told me to do it. Lord, I thank you that you rebuked me the power for my sake. I am the blessed and highly favored child of the most high God. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Come on. You said you would bless me 30, 60, 100 fold. Some of you are looking for 1%. You're not even going for 30 or 60 or 100. You're just like, I just hope it just goes a little. I just want to survive. Come on. He said, you're more than an overcomer. Right. Well, I tried that once, preacher. Well, faith comes by hearing Hearing by the Word of God. That tells me you quit listening to the Word. You tried it, spoke it out until you got tired of listening to your own voice thrown on, and then you quit. Big smile. you got to be in that Word daily. Even when you don't feel like it, you got to be chewing that Word up. Putting it in. Speaking it out. Chewing it up. Speaking it out. Chewing it up. Speaking it out. Chewing it up. Speaking it out. Until all of a sudden you start feeling something swell up in you. And then, you know, there's days that I feel like I can swing out over hell and on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. And there's other days I gotta have just enough faith to get out of my chair because my body quit working. But I got the same faith every day. And I speak to my body and I command it. You come in alignment with the Word of God. By His stripes I was healed. The day that I quit expecting my body to respond to the Word is the day that I'm already with. Now has there been a few times that it came close? Oh yeah. But guess what? The redeemed of the Lord had to start saying so. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Some of you, the redeemed of the Lord, need to start saying so again. Amen. You need to come out of here encouraged today. Say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. He saved me from the curse of the law. I'm more, I'm a king's kid. I, I've got something to fight for. I got something to fight with. And I'm going to start saying so. Amen. 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 
That when you say so, you need to expect something to happen. Well, I ain't never done nothing like that, preacher. I just started this stuff, and you all sound crazy. Welcome to the club. It works. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Take the word of God for it. Amen. Start saying so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many here is encouraged in your spirit? To start saying something different this week. Amen. Then I've done my job. And I'm going to leave it at that. I feel the joy of the Lord in the house this morning. So Lord, I just release the joy into everybody that's here. Let their spirit man be filled with joy. He quoted Let the joy and the peace of God overflow them by the power of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, let faith be released that they say so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.